What is up everyone? So today is a good day because today I'll be sharing with you 7 tips on editing your travel videos. So I know a lot of you have been asking me to do tutorials on like editing, on color grading and transitions, all that kind of like techy techy stuff. So Finally, I found the right time and day to do this. So editing itself, it's such a huge and broad topic that I don't think anyone can cover within a single video. So this is really more of a sharing session kind of thing. And the second thing to note is that this video will be specifically for editing a travel montage or a travel video of like two to four minutes. So yeah, let's just start, shall we? All right, so my very first tip is to organize your footages, all right? This is so important even before you edit because um, imagine if you just came back from like a two-week trip and you have like tons of footages in one folder It's gonna be so difficult to try and find what you need So let's just hit to my computer screen and let me show you like how I kind of like organize my stuff Alright, so now you are in my computer and now we are looking at my South Africa folder and as you can see I have Organized my footages into like day one to day nine and this is from my main camera the Sony a7s II and then I have my secondary camera which is the a6500 likewise day 1 to day 7 and then I have the drone I have the GoPro and so on and so forth so what I do when I'm overseas is um, I would try every night to back up my footages and just name them accordingly to whatever day it is so in this way it's a lot more organized and I can remember okay which day did I do what and it's, it's just a lot easier to search for whatever you want all right so now we head into my editing suite um i'm using adobe premiere pro so same thing i've created folders according to the cameras the a7s2 same thing all the days and then i also have a folder for titles and then i have the sound effects as well so if i need to search for any sound effect that i would like to use it's all inside here Alright, so my second tip would be to have a really, really good intro. Okay, this is the part where the viewer decides whether or not they want to leave or they would like to stay and watch on more of your video. So the first 5 to 20 seconds of your video, it's very, very crucial. So what you can do is to be creative with your edits at the front, show off like some of the best moments in your video, of your video, include shots that are shot in the golden hour where the light is more flattering. Have a good title screen, invest time in designing your titles. Believe me or not, I spend way too much time just to design the fonts, trying to think of what font should I use. So yeah. All right, so tip number three would be to cut out the best parts of your video. Every second counts when it comes to travel montages and travel videos, so you really want to put out really the cream of the crop. The best moments that you can put in your video. So let's just head over to my computer and I'll show you how I kind of do this. Alright, so what I usually do is I would try to do up the intro part first. Anything that I've planned to do and then maybe the title screen. And then from there on, if I have no like inspiration or like no clue on what I want to put next based on the music, this is where the tedious part starts. Um, so I would have to go through like all of my footages and cut out the best parts and then put them down in the sequence. Alright, so what I do is I would look based on the thumbnails and I would roughly know like, okay, which um, video has a good shot. So for example, I remember this guy, this dude over here, yo, alright? So I'm gonna find out the best moment, yeah? Alright, over there, alright? So that, that, that was the golden moment from what I can remember. Right about here, put down the out point, then I would drag it down to the timeline. I would go through the whole day and then I would just put out all the best moments and build it up. So once I'm like sick of um, doing this process, uh, I might want to just visit the sequence again and try to see if you know any of the footages fit according to the music, which kind of brings us to the next point. So tip number four would be to edit your cuts to the beat of the music or to the mood or feel of the music okay this is so important this is one of the most important tips that i can give today so let's head on to the computer again all right so first up i just want to show you an example of my south africa video we we'll just have a watch on how i edit my cuts to the music <laughs> All 
Alright, so as you can see, I have edited my cuts according to like the keys being played in the track. So you can see all this like peaks over here. Yep, so that's where I cut my video. Alright, so one more thing about editing your cuts to the beat, right, is that you don't want to make it too regular or too predictable. Um, like for example, in this song, you don't want to cut every part to the keys or to the beat and you know make it similar. In fact, what I did was um, sometimes I don't even edit to the beat itself, making it a bit more irregular and less predictable and it's just more interesting. Now I'm going to show you another part of the video. Alright, so here it goes. Alright, so as you can see again, first of all, I'm editing now according to the drum beats, right? Again, by those picks that you can see, the mini mini picks, lah, like this one. Yep, tap, tap, tap. So that was according to the beat. And then another thing that you can note is that the cuts are now a little bit more snappy and there's a lot more going on in the footage. So, for example, of this Impala running. Right, a lot more action going on. Um, an elephant that's coming in, walking in. And then, this one. And myself climbing up. So, there's a lot more going on in this part because things are building up and my cuts are more snappy. So, yeah. So, tip number five would be to have a story or have a flow in your travel video instead of just putting like nice random clips together. Um, I think it really really helps you have a certain kind of flow. Alright, so we are back again at the Africa edit if you don't mind. Uh, anyways, yes, um, again the, the flow I, I did was to have an intro and then after that the title screen and then there I kind of started introducing you guys to the elements of the video. So for example, I'm showing you know the boy um, first, like I'm, I'm trying to show like the people of Africa first, alright, then after that the flag with a bit of scenery and then I'm showing wildlife now, a very nice shot of uh, mother hyena and a baby hyena, close up of nature, before I tell you guys that you know I've just arrived and you can see that there's a start of a journey, there's a certain kind of flow to it, I introduce you guys to my friends, my travel companions, and then after that, show you guys another scenic shot. And then there's another like mini story where, you know, I, I tell you guys that I'm going to climb Lion's Head Mountain. So again, there's another journey that, you know, you would kind of follow me on. And just to fast forward things, at the very end, um, I'm showing you guys like myself like reaching the peak of the mountain. So tip number six would be to use transitions with purpose. Too many times I've seen so many people just abusing transitions just to look impressive but it's really not impressive. You know, they just keep zooming in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out, zoom, zoom, zoom and like it's just so distracting. It's super distracting to the story and really transitions are there to serve the story and not the other way around. And especially when you don't even use the transitions according to the beat of the music, it's just really not connecting. Okay, so I just want to show you guys like a few examples of transitions that I use. So this one is the film burn. So it's just an overlay to my footages. And it's a very like cinematic kind of transition that, you know, it's really not complicated. Okay, so the next one that I'm going to show you is uh, called Speed Ramping. So as you can see, right, um, I've increased the speed up to 8,000. Um, usually it's not that high. Usually I would increase it up to like 1,000, 2,000. This is one of my favorite like transition techniques to just increase the speed of the clip before moving on to the next scene and, and it really helps. Alright, and last of all, I'm gonna just let you on into a little secret. Okay, actually not really a secret, but... Okay, this is the zoom transition that a lot of people like to use. So I'm just gonna let you know where I got this transition from. Okay, it's from this guy called Baker Tutes. Baker's Tuts. Okay, I don't know how to pronounce but um, You can search up automatic smooth transitions or this all-in-one preset. 
I'll put down the link in the description. So tip number seven would be sound effects and sound design. A lot of times we are just really more focused on to like the visuals and okay maybe the music but we don't really pay attention to sound effects. So what is sound effects? Basically it's to have like ambient sounds, um, say a sound of the waves, sound of a park, those kind of little little sound effects can really take your videos to another level. It can really make a viewer feel like they are really there experiencing what you're experiencing. So, right, for sound effects and sound design, I, I'm going to show you guys my Paris project where I kind of invested quite a bit of time into making a really good like sound design for it. So what I'm going to do is to mute the soundtrack of this video and I just want you to watch and experience the sound design. So it's pretty interesting, right? Like even without like the music track, it sounds it it's watchable. In fact, it's quite a different experience altogether. And yeah, uh, most of these is actually not the live audio because the live audio sometimes kind of suck. So I use like custom um, sound effects to replicate the sound of say, you know, this flag. And then you can hear the zoom. And even the ducks, like I got it like separately. Footsteps. So yeah, having a bit of sound design in your videos can really, really put it to the next level and give it a different dimension and it, it really just makes it more immersive um, for people who are watching your video. So that is all for today. I hope you have managed to learn something and I hope you will be able to apply some of these tips to your future projects, your future travel videos. Do give me a thumbs up if this has helped you and leave me any further questions that you may have in the comments. Yeah, um, subscribe for more music and travel. As always, I really, really do appreciate it and I will see you in the next video.